Okay, um, it's time and I see people are joining the session. Many thanks for all of you. Then let's get right into the topic. Um, so I asked the question, why perfection is the enemy of progress? Um, this is a sentence uh, said by um, Winston Churchill. He had another one very similar. The maxim, nothing avails but perfection may be spelled shorter, paralysis. So what, what was his point? I think uh, the point was rather than aiming um, for the, the perfect result, we should our, ask ourselves more often, is what we have right now good enough to go out with it? Does it do the job? Does it help us to get feedback? Um, will we get smarter with it? And um, are we actually at the sweet spot of uh, our resources invested in the topic? Um, and to visualize or describe this a bit better, I, I'd also like to start with the 80-20 rule. Many of you might know it. It's also called the Pareto principle. Uh, in 1896, Wilfredo Pareto, while uh, researching at the APFL in Lausanne, uh, found out that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the population. And uh, he went on and did more analysis with the tools he had at the time about statistics and so on and found more connections. And every time the relationship um, not every time, but often it turned out in this 80-20 um, uh, balance. Then a couple of decades later, a guy called Joseph M. Duran, uh, management consultant, found out that 80% uh, of the problems are caused by 20% of defects. I, I think he was uh, talking about um, industrial manufacturing. Um, and this meant that focusing only of a small part of the defects would solve uh, most of the problems that uh, users or consumers in the end would see. And he called this the Pareto principle. Then again, a couple of decades fast forward, um, some people say that 80% of software can be written in only 20% of the time, but then um, uh, vice versa, the, the remaining 20% of the features take often 80% of the resources. So to, uh, to achieve perfection um, actually is, is quite uh, consuming. And also another um, connection might be that 80% of users only use 20% of the features, which in return might mean that focusing on only 20% of the features might uh, save us or might make the majority of the people happy while not uh, spending more time on that. And all that can also be explained with, with uh, the long tail. You might have uh, heard of the long tail. It's from a book by Chris Anderson. Um, and uh, so this is an, another vi visualization of this. So in this case, most people only use a small share of the websites, of the domains, and all the others um, are used for far less. They're, they still might be interesting to some of you, the, the niches that use them, but they are not... Um, uh, the, the majority, used by the majority of the people in the internet. Um, when I started at Netcetera, we did everything still in the waterfall model. So we wrote 300 pages of specification and the assumption was that it was possible to actually uh, describe a complex system in these 300 pages and no more ask, uh, questions would be asked. Thankfully, a couple of years later, we started to uh, adapt and implement uh, agile ideas like uh, the scrum methodology and so on and we started rather having one big stint uh, to to work in iterations and the idea of the iterations was to have something working at the end of of every uh, phase uh, ideally something that you could even put into production but on a on a lesser level something that you could show to the to the customer um, I'm sure you have seen this picture a thousand of times or a similar one. Um, this on, on top, we have the, the old style of, of um, building stuff. So we, we first build all the parts and then only in the last step, we assemble everything, hopefully to find out that what we are building is what the, the customer or the user wants in the end. 
Another way um, to do that would be, as I said before, in iterations. Um, so in, in this picture, uh, we go first and build a skateboard and we, we put a stick on it and it's a kickboard go to bike, motorbike, and a car. I don't like this uh, example very much because I think it has some flaws in it. For instance, going from a kickboard with small wheels and, and the board to a bike is a complete overhaul and you have to throw away most of it. So the following slide shows uh, a picture that is uh, much sweeter to me in several aspects. Um, so uh, assuming you want to be a baker, start with something simple like a, a cupcake. Um, you just need uh, the paper for the form, you need the pastry um, and an oven, and you, you build that or bake that, and you go to your customers, maybe friends or family, and ask them, do you like the pastry? They say, mm, yeah, it's nice, but you could add a bit of icing. So you go back to your uh, bakery, you, you add that, you go out again, you ask them, uh, maybe they tell you, okay, strawberry flavor would be nicer than just uh, the bare uh, cupcake flavor. So you add that, you add a bit of uh, crumbs on top, and then you start uh, fanning out into and, and scaling up your, your production because you know that uh, your product is actually appreciated by your customers. And from there, you can uh, also go on and build different kind of uh, uh, products or, or bake different kind of products by um, staying in this picture. Um, this is all a bit abstract, but I recently fell into this trap myself and I keep falling into it, uh, which actually made me uh, ask for, for giving this presentation. So uh, we own a parking space, um, but we don't have a car. So most of the time this parking space is empty uh, only maybe 10, 20 times uh, per year, we uh, use it ourselves by, by a rented car or by, uh, for our visitors. So I don't, want, I don't want to rent it out. That was the luxury um, I uh, decided to have. But on the other hand, uh, there is not enough uh, visitor parking outside. And so this is not really efficient. How can I solve this problem? And being the electronics guide, uh, guy and... Um, in love with IoT, of course, my first thought was about uh, using electronics to solve this, this. So I fell into my first trap. Um, I, I thought, okay, an e-paper device with battery, with Wi-Fi, would display if, if it's currently booked or not. And then uh, my neighbors could go on and uh, decide whether they want to pay for, for uh, renting the space or not. Um, but with that came a lot of other problems. There is no Wi-Fi connection at that spot in the garage. I don't know, there, there's no uh, power supply. So what, I don't know how long the batteries would, would last. Uh, which sensor would I have to use that it's uh, like far-sighted enough to, to measure if there's a car? Then I realized what I'm doing here. This is all far too complex, far, far too complicated. I need to um, remove as much of the solution as I can. and. I ask myself, what is the minimum that I need to get this uh, working? And uh, the answer to that was actually quite simple. And two of the components were already built. It's a payment provider that uh, integrates easily into any uh, web application. And it is a, a Google calendar that every one of us knows and some of, our, of us use. And it has an API to create new entries in that uh, calendar. And I'm a developer, so I can write the, the middle part, the, the application myself. Uh, also to, to not install a Tomcat server or whatever, I decided to do this in PHP. It was possible to implement this basically in an afternoon. And uh, I didn't have to deal with all the other problems uh, that might have come up. So I simplified my solution. I don't know if it's the most simple one, but uh, it works. So uh, I'm already coming to the conclusions um, because uh, time is uh, nearly up. I could talk about this for hours and I'd love to discuss this with you as well. Um, so one thing I'm learned, I learned and I'm learning over and over that reducing is hard. We start with our mindset. We, we come where we come from. We have a hammer and we see a nail and we use that one. Like for me, the electronics in the garage example. Um, it's also hard because we have to let go of stuff that uh, is dear to us and we, um, and th this is like energetically for our brain is really hard. Then another thing um, that I think is, is a good um, training 
or, or that requires training, a minimal viable product is very hard to build and it's a bit like art. Um, the ideal MVP is like the cupcake that I showed initially. So that for each step to the next one, you basically don't have to throw anything away. You just build on top of that and improve it. The, the skateboard, kickboard, bike example is not a good one because you have to throw away uh, a, lot, um, a lot of what you already built. So building on top of each other, but this requires uh, um, a lot of expertise in the field that you're applying this. Also, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go out and show what you have to your customers or maybe just the friends and family face, but it's important to get feedback that you're on the right track. Only, only by overcoming this fear and realizing that this 80% um, maybe is good enough is uh, helping you towards the goal. Another sentence that I just love, and I apply this every day in the project whenever I can, is fake it until you make it. I admit it has a kind of a bad uh, side taste, but um, the point is uh, you don't need to finish um, or implement everything. Sometimes you can uh, implement a backend and you have to solve the problems manually. Maybe you only have three users, so you can easily do this manually. But when you realize that the three users double to, to six, to 12, and so on, uh, then you start implementing your automated backend. So only make automatic what actually is worth doing. And ask yourself more often, is what I what I'm doing, what I'm building good enough rather than is it perfect? Thank you very much for your uh, attention. If you like to talk about this or if you like uh, me to consult in your project with this, please let me know. I'm, I'm really happy and really passionate about this topic. So thanks and bye.